Okay, so continuing with the Nirvana Audio Full Range Driver, the 8 inch uh, diameter classic series, and uh, I received a comment which is uh, totally a valid comment that there's a lot of breakup on that driver above 2 kilohertz, and we need to cross it over at uh, 1700, uh, 550, so 1750 hertz. Uh, so let's have a look at it. What, what uh, did he post about? So you see, this is what he's talking about. So there's, we can see that there's like two humps there, and then afterwards we see a lot of uh, irregularities, uh, bizarre irregularities, as as F Father Ted would say, uh, at the very high frequencies. And you see, it starts above two kilohertz. So. And when we look at, at the range, at, at the size of this, so this is like, we are talking about a 5 dB, like uh, going up like 3-4 dBs and then dropping down 1 dB from there. And, uh, and it's happening within the range right there, so that's like a 1.5 kilohertz or so range that's happening. And, but I would say that with what we are seeing here is not really a cone breakup. Uh, but those are phasing issues and, and what we would see as a cone breakup mode here so that, that that sharp valley would be more or that peak there or that peak would be a little bit more characteristic of cone breakup but let's maybe uh, see where did I open it here so let, let's see how a real cone breakup looks like so this is a 15 inch woofer and you see like up to one kilohertz it works really nicely and then the output starts to drop and then here that's where we start to see the cone breakup mode uh, so this is where the cone starts to behave as, as a single unit and then starts to uh, produce really spurious artifacts and when we cross over our drivers uh, that's when we want to cross over at second order if we have these breakup modes and and the breakup modes are pretty high in level so now here these are I would say like like 10 15 dB like 10 dB below the peak here at 10 kilohertz so we mm, I would say like 10 kilohertz is pretty far away from 1 kilohertz, but uh, it, it might still, it will show up in the sound uh, if you use a first uh, order filter uh, and, and you might want to use a second order filter because of that gigantic breakup mode peak over there. But you see, when we are talking about breakup modes, then you have these sharp and jagged peaks, sharp and jagged, sharp and jagged. And, and what we have here, uh, oops, I cannot zoom in anymore, but these, these are soft, so like uh, soft uh, peaks, not, not that sharp, but eventually these peaks here, these are also phase cancellation issues and, and not uh, really uh, cone breakup modes. But, uh, well, it doesn't truly matter whether uh, the issue comes from a phase cancellation or cone breakup, uh, the end result is the same, is we have an uneven response. And now that's, uh, we, we can do something uh, about it. We cannot just equalize it easily. Well, you could use DSP, but, but I, I, um, th that, that's a whole different uh, piece of uh, technology that, that you can add to it. And, and the problem with that is that uh, these valleys and peaks, uh, they depend on, uh, on, on, on the horizontal position and vertical position of axis. So, so this is just the on-axis response. The, these valleys and troughs, uh, and peak, troughs and peaks, they would be quite different if you are going off-axis. And, um, and now, uh, when we have, when, when they make a full range driver, it is way, way, way harder to uh, design one that, that has a reasonable or, or very smooth uh, response all the way compared to a dedicated driver when you have only 
just a mid-range frequency dedicated driver, then it's relatively easy to uh, to design that driver so that uh, we do not have uh, such uh, breakup modes or phase cancellation issues. Or, or is it truly the case? Now let's have a look at it. So let's. Uh, uh, let's suspect that we go that way because this, this doesn't look good. So now let's cross it over. So, so here we start dropping the frequency uh, and, uh, and then it will look much nicer because we are avoiding this region that doesn't look so good. But what... Uh, actually, I will go into that a little bit later. So right now what we are going to expect and hope from using a dedicated mid-range driver uh, uh, to get rid of those peaks, and and can we can we do that? So now I have chosen a, a, a mid-range uh, driver, a modern mid-range driver, uh, a really high-tech one, and one that is at a ten times the price compared to the Audio Nirvana driver. So now we are looking at something where where people use like. Uh, endless resources of money to to develop a much smoother uh, frequency response and and they didn't have to worry about uh, handling the bass they didn't have to worry about handling the the high frequencies so now let's see uh, what did they come up with and 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 check this out uh, we are not going to get uh, much better because here this is one kilohertz 2 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz. And check this out. We have uh, like a 5 dB, a 5, 6 dB trough anyway. So what we had before here, we had two peaks in the same frequency range. Now we still have its exact same amplitude. It's still 5 dB. There it was 5 dB as well. Here it's 5 dB. Just instead of the two peaks, we have one. Uh, it is very arguable uh, which would sound better. This will sound as, as a clear dip in the uh, mid-range, a clear lack of extension. It's kind of like the imaging cues are all muted. And here we are having basically half of those imaging cues. So, so I would say that uh, by crossing this region over and, and giving it a dedicated mid-range driver, we really have solved nothing. And then the problem is that when we cross over these regions, uh, uh, in my experience, when you have such irregularities, either here or if you have a dedicated mid-range driver, doesn't matter which you use, but these issues, these irregularities, they, they truly become unmanageable when you cross over and in this region. So when you cross over, then basically what we are doing is that, uh, especially if you are using higher order networks, then that capacitor and inductor combination that we use to cross it over, it basically, it's not just cutting the energy and getting rid of it. Let, let's go back here. So it's not just a smooth drop, but basically it's, uh, it's, it's filling up the inductor with energy, it's filling up the capacitor with energy, and, and they are ping-ponging the energy back and forth. So, so whatever we have here as, as a 5 dB slope, uh, like, like the valley down there, it's going to be much worse when we throw a crossover at it. So when we throw inductors and capacitors with that, they are making a bloody massacre out of it. And why this is like uh, noticeable uh, while you run it full range and then and, and you would say, ah, it adds a definitive uh, coloration. But when we cross it over, even though the output level will be down by here, let's say by uh, 8 dB, 10 dB, Regardless of that, it will create such phase and frequency response anomalies, that interaction with the crossover network, that it's going to become very troublesome and very noticeable. 
at this point these peaks they 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 really show up as if uh, it was an anomaly in your room response so it, it it's like semi natural it doesn't seem weird but if we throw a crossover on it then it becomes something really artificial really uh, something that does not it will create sound effects that do not exist in uh, real life with natural music so that's when it will become totally edited and processed and because of these things that we are having here these irregularities unevenness uh, i would say that when you go for the high frequency uh, every every high frequency driver has these uh, unevennesses and uh, when you think that it doesn't that's because they have engineered they have sculpted the on axis response to look as nice on paper as possible however you just go 20 or 30 degrees off axis and it looks already like a dog's dinner so there's really nothing we can do about uh, these these this end of the spectrum and uh, and i would say that it's not all that shabby uh, and and it's pretty decent for uh, a full range driver so now i would suggest uh, i will stop here with this video and we'll continue with other videos uh, on the full range drivers and looking at the curves of full range drivers and how do they look like how do they compare thank you for your awesome comments awesome uh, not if uh, awesome catches like what what you see and and, and and all the issues because yeah that that's kind of something noticeable and uh, and, it, and it's really something that bugs me the most because that's in in the very uh, noticeable frequency range so anything between 2 and uh, 5 kilohertz it's going to be at the focus of your attention however uh, why full range drivers really work after all it's because there's no crossover so you you are just using a, a point source and there is no uh, no spatial uh, distancing between different cones there are no uh, crossover networks pumping energy into each other or modifying the energy output your amplifier just works with it and and uh, and the acoustic dampening that it sees from your room so i hope this helps a little bit and uh, and that's why uh, measurements are not so easy uh, that the figures that we see they do not always translate exactly to perceived sound quality because there's much more behind it so that's just the graph of the naked driver when you hook it up to uh, to a test system what it does but once we uh, put it in a loudspeaker cabinet and uh, hook it up to a real amplifier and measure the output in a real live reading room it's it's something uh, uh, quite different and and um yep so i think uh, that's where we are and we shall continue bye bye